So in 2001, in a keynote at a show called Fun Expo, uh, which isn't around anymore, I urged the arcade industry to share their revenue with the game publishers and distributors in a revenue share to try to create exclusive distribution windows. Now, I envisioned the only place to play great games like Halo or Call of Duty in the first days before launch would be at an arcade. And I could see people just lining up, fans lining up to play them. Um, and the video arcade business back then was still a billion dollar plus business, but it was starting to kind of fall apart and be in decline because frankly, playing games from your couch in your living room was really easy. It was actually fun and it was cheap and it was good and screens were getting better. Um, and I was labeled a heretic for even suggesting that kind of change, which if you know me, I probably took as a compliment. Now, in talking to movie theaters chains over the last couple of years, I've been kind of saying the same thing, which is you guys need to evolve or you're going to die. Watching movies from the comfort of the living room is just getting too good and too cheap and too easy. And they always talked about, you know, they focus on the movie going experience and the fact that it was a shared experience. But what people want are social experiences. And they didn't actually see death as a possible outcome because they were always protected by these exclusive distribution windows and they figured they were gonna be around forever. And then coronavirus. And so all of a sudden death looks like a distinct possibility. So CMX, which is a chain of 41 theaters, recently filed chapter 11. Now in their announcement, they said that they're giving 30% of the revenue to the mall owners and the real estate developers and they're giving 60% to the studios, which if you're good at math like me, that leaves 10% to cover all of your other expenses, which is kind of absurd. It's just not a sustainable business model. Now, obviously, that's why popcorn costs 10 bucks a bucket and it's $5 for a Coke. And that's historically where, um, where cinemas have made their money. And what these guys wanted to do is they said, we want to cap our revenue share to the studios at 40%. Now, last week, Universal, and I've talked about Trolls World Tour um, being the first major release to go bypass the theaters from a studio and go to what's now being called Premium Video On Demand or PVOD. Now, the Wall Street Journal this week reported that Trolls earned almost $100 million in three weeks of domestic release. Now, the studios get an 80% revenue share on that, which is higher than what they get from the theater. So that's equivalent to like $150 million for Trolls 1. And so Trolls 2 made about the same amount of money for the studio in three weeks that it did in its entire run in the theaters for Troll One, Trolls One. Now, Universal CEO Jeff Shell basically came out in this interview and he was quoted as saying, as soon as theaters reopen, we expect to release movies on both formats, meaning direct P premium video on demand and to theaters. Now, Warner Brothers recently announced that their new animated feature based on Scooby-Doo called Scoob is going to release direct to theaters on May 15th for 1999 for a three day viewing window. Now, Ann Sarnoff, who's the CEO of Warner Brothers, was quoted as saying, while we're all eager to be able to once again show our films in theaters, we're navigating new unprecedented times which call for creative thinking and adaptability in how we distribute our content. We know fans are eager to see Scoob and we're delighted we can deliver this feel-good movie for families to enjoy while they're home together. Now, AMC is seeing this clearly as a massive threat. They're the largest theater chain in America. They have 8,000 screens, I believe, in 1,000 locations globally. So their CEO, Adam Aaron, basically came out and said, effective immediately, we will no longer be playing any Universal movies in any of our theaters in the US, Europe, and Middle East, which is basically everywhere. Now, this is a low risk move for them because frankly, Universal doesn't really have any more big content coming out this year and the theaters effectively are closed in most places anyway. So this is massive positioning and this is kind of a shot across the bow to the other studios like Warner Brothers who do have big movies coming out in the summer. Now, I spoke to Todd Monsell, who's the VP of Operations for Synergy Entertainment, which is a hybrid movie theater family entertainment center chain, about the relationships between the theaters and the studios. It does show the disconnect between the studios who give the product and the exhibitors who show it, right? It's a huge disconnect. This should be a synergy, so yeah. to speak, rather than what the disconnect it is, because we need each other. We, we have to have each other in order for this to come out in the long run. 
um, and to figure this out. But it's almost as very defiant on both ends. Now, AMC is in a life or death moment. They recently raised a half a billion dollars in additional debt to survive the, cor the coronavirus pandemic lockdown. And they really know that people only go to movies because of the exclusive window, and they need a steady supply of exclusive content. But realistically, they have zero leverage because now the studios are really the big guns, and they know they can earn big dollars with premium video on demand. If trolls can earn $100 million in three weeks, what might a real tentpole feature earn? Now, theaters are betting that this is a one-off, right? That it, and it's entirely possible that it is. Maybe trolls just hit the right timing with kids at home and parents freaking out, and they're desperate to get 90 minutes of peace and quiet. It's also possible that 5G is causing coronavirus, and if you inject bleach into your body, it'll protect you. Um, now, that was a joke. Don't be stupid. The real big gun here is Disney. 38% of the box office in America last year was Disney films, if you include their acquisition of Fox Studios. And they had seven of the top 10 grossing movies of 2019. Now, when they released Star Wars, they leveraged the revenue share of the theaters from 60, 65, up to 70% because Star Wars is Star Wars. Now, what would happen if the next Star Wars movie went direct to premium video on demand? How many people might be willing to pay a hundred bucks on opening night to host a Star Wars viewing party at their house? I know I would. Now, big boxing matches have been taking nine figure halls in premium pay-per-view for years. And the most recent ones with Floyd Mayweather and especially the one he just did with Conor McGregor, set a new record, $700 million in one night. Now, I know boxing is big and MMA is bigger. In fact, MMA has 260 million fans, but Star Wars has a billion fans. So think about what that means for the possibility of big tent poles going direct to home. Now, the streaming services, these studios have streaming services now, and they're laying the pipe for direct distribution of their content into the home anyway. Disney recently launched Disney Plus. NBC Universal is launching Peacock as we speak. And Warner Brothers owns HBO, which is launching HBO Max next month. So these guys are already putting in the pipeline to be able to do this stuff. Now, the theaters that survive are going to be the ones like Synergy Entertainment that double down on experiences, on what you can do out of home that you can't do in home. This is something that the Family Entertainment Center and the arcade business learned the hard way. Now there's a thing called 4D, 4D theaters. It has motion seats and wind and sound and smell and all of these effects. It's been around for 10 or 15 years. There's four or five companies providing that technology, yet the largest provider, which has 600 theaters globally, only has 32 in the United States because theaters have been slow to evolve. Now, they also have been, you've been seeing VIP theaters going out with mediocre food in most places. And I think you're going to see them have to up their game and create real good dining experiences to go along with the movies because... The theater experience of going and paying top dollar for a normal chair and an overpriced bucket of popcorn is over. And someday in the future, when some little boy asks his mommy and daddy, why aren't there theaters anymore? The answer is going to be trolls, son. Trolls.